Would guidance from an expert help you to grow your business or career? Or do you seek inspiration for you or your kids? If so, welcome. Behind the Words TV gives you that one-on-one -on -one time with famous and emerging authors or content creators. They'll take you where you want to go. Behind the Words TV, right now. Welcome back to this segment of Behind the Words TV. I'm Paul Madsen, here with Tom Cleary, author of Understanding God. Welcome back, Tom. Thanks, Paul. Hey, great. Uh, you know, your book is a, is a, talks about the personal journey that you had spiritually. Uh, lots of uh, speed bumps, and lots of, <laughs> like, like many of us. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I don't know if anybody has smooth sailing all the way. But at any rate, uh, I think we can learn from your, your, your speed bumps along the way. Um, a lot of the reason you wrote the book, you said, is uh, because I think you feel like people are misunderstanding. But what are they misunderstanding? Well, it, it kind of starts with people being people. We like to be in control. We like to be in charge. We like to be running things. And that's kind of where the problem starts, is when people get to be thinking they're in charge, they start asking themselves, what do I got to do? You know, what, what checklist do I got? What, what criteria do I got to meet? Okay. And you apply yeah. that to God and you run into some problems. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big list guy, you know, check, 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 I check, check, check. And, you know, oh, I must be a good person. I'm getting all this done. And I never really thought about that being applied to my spiritual life. Right, and uh, it kind of just becomes kind of automatic. People say, well, what do you got to do to, to join your church? Or what do you got to do to get into heaven? And what do you got to do to get right with God? I mean, isn't that why people join church is so they can get into heaven? It is, I think, a relationship with God is absolutely critical. Um, but the, the derailment happens when you start thinking you need to earn your way into heaven. Right, right. Because that, I think we that's all... That's the misunderstanding. That's the misunderstanding. Okay. There's this standard of God perfection up here, and there's most of us down here somewhere, mm -hmm. knowing that there's really nothing we can do to earn God's love. Okay. And, you know, the, the problem starts when you hear people preaching a checklist or a, a way to live. You start thinking, well, this person's not living some perfect life. This yeah. person's probably a hypocrite. Yeah, you're a hypocrite. And you see that. You go, go to church and you say, you know, hey, uh, my thing about church is I'm sitting here and the person two, two seats down from me probably believes something different than I believe, actually. It's, isn't faith a really individualized thing? It, 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 it's, it's both. It's, it's an individual thing, a relationship between you and God and, and for us as Christians through Jesus Christ our Lord. But it's also a communal thing. It's a faith community and, and you, you come together in community and you strengthen each other in community. And so it all comes together in a kind of a, a whole. Yeah, I mean, do people, uh, we talked earlier about people running away from the church, burning out from church. I mean, is that is that part of the misunderstanding? I mean, they, they have the misunderstanding. Is that why they that's, flee? That's kind of the outcome and the consequence of the misunderstanding because after you start thinking, well, this preacher is probably a hypocrite, you start looking in the mirror <laughs> and that's when things get really depressing because you start going, well, I'm not living some perfect life. God's yeah. standard is perfection. Yeah. And you start thinking, well, I'm not worthy and I, I, I can't possibly get God to love me. What could I do? I've done all these horrible things. Right. And, you know, a, a voice in your head, you can call it the conscience, you can call it the Holy Spirit. It can be a helpful thing. Right. Hey, you screwed up. Maybe you should go apologize to that person or, you know, but remember God still loves you. But when the voice gets really loud and it starts telling you things like, God will never love you. God will never forgive you. You're not worthy You're of it. You're a bad person. Yeah. You're a bad person. Yeah. That's when you realize later that it's not God talking, it's the other guy. Okay. And the only way to get that voice out of your head is to run away. Interesting. You get yourself out of earshot and I don't have to listen to that anymore. And One that's what the, happened with you me. You bet. Uh, get, get out of earshot. That's good. Is there any getting out of earshot away from God? That's kind of hard to no, do. No, but the other guy, you can <laughs> get away from that voice. Okay, if you can. Well, that brings up a, a quote I really liked in your book on page 65 here. It says, uh, we really cannot do anything for God to make ourselves worthy of him. Now I understand that. I only need to believe the word and I am saved. Then though, I thought there were, work, there were works to be performed, works that would never be satisfactory. The volume was going at full blast at this point. You are not, nor will you ever be, good enough. Explain that, Tom. Well, that's that voice that's too loud, that voice that's really coming from, from someone, the other guy that wants you to turn away from God. And uh, it's a complete misunderstanding of what God has been telling us all along. It's this notion that if I've got to do works and perform good deeds to, to get God to love me, I'll never 
climb that ladder. I'll never be good enough. We all know that, I think, at a very instinctive level, that that's just not how it works. It, God's God. You know how impossibly hard God is to shop for, Paul? I mean, what do you get the God who is, you know, God? I mean, he doesn't need shop anything for. from us. He doesn't, he doesn't need anything from us. We can't offer him anything. Good point. And so, but the, the good news is, of course, we don't have to. Yeah. But, but you miss all that when you've been hearing for years a garbled message based on a misunderstanding of what he's been telling us. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and it is. I mean, you, I remember as a young man uh, the, the same kind of thing. I said, you know, what do I have to do to be a good Christian? And, you know, uh, didn't embrace enough the, for you're saved by grace through faith kind of thing. Right. Um, it, it, do people need to hear that verse more often than they, Absolutely. they do? Absolutely. Absolutely they do. You, you don't, when people say, what do, you, what do I got to do to be a good Christian? You don't do anything. Be, leave. Believe in God's good and gracious word. Trust that that word is true, that the resurrection is real, and that Jesus Christ is Lord. And then you may be assured of your salvation in an eternal relationship with your Father in heaven. Wow. Well, and, and that's it. It's, it's a gift. It is a it's gift. It's not something a we earn. And um, too often we think about, we, we hear opposite from that. Absolutely. Um, speaking of gift. This doesn't tie in exactly, but I, 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 you know, the, the title, Understanding God. I just wonder if somebody might see that and say, huh, I've been a Christian all my life, or I've had, been religious all my life with my faith journey, and I've put effort into it, and I think I'm diligent, you know. Uh, who is this guy, this Tom Cleary guy that write a book to tell me to how to understand God? That's a personal thing. Well, who the heck is he? I'm a guy that's walked down the road of thinking you have to earn God, and I've found out that the only thing at the end of that road is dust and despair <laughs> dust. and, and, and you know, ultimately an exit from a relationship with God. And as I said before, I'm not alone in this. My story is not unique. Uh, so the, the issue is, and I'm challenging people, even people that have thought about God their whole life, is to, to think deeply and prayerfully about the very essence of our faith and what God has been telling us, and then how we proclaim that message to the wider world. Because clearly something is going wrong right now. Uh, but I am convinced if we preach God's good and gracious word with great clarity and energy, we can grow God's church again. Well, that's ambitious, and we'll pick that up at the next segment. Uh, you know, I mean, I, you're, you're, you're a faith soldier, like a lot of us. You've had your lows, you've had your highs, and you're not telling people how to believe. You're telling people how you believe. Correct. Is that what I'm getting? I'm just telling them to believe, They're, trust in God. Yeah. How that manifests itself, how you respond to God's gift, is going to be unique to, to as many people as there are on the planet. And that I'm absolutely not telling you how to do that. <laughs> no, and, no. And we'll probably get into a little bit of that uh, in the next segment. You bet, you bet. Well, this is uh, Tom Clary, Understanding God. The Joys of Finally Hearing God's Good and Gracious Word, uh, a fantastic book. I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Uh, check it out if you want to think a little bit more about misunderstandings in your faith or your journey or your personal faith situation. I'm Paul Madsen with Tom Cleary. Thanks for joining us on this segment of Behind the Words TV.